Hey, good to have you back. Um, I, I'm going to take a look at uh, at a uh, classic jazz standard today, and we're going to do uh, a chord melody. I, I would sort of, I would, I would say that this is somewhere in the uh, medium difficulty category, um, but but it's it, it's a lovely chord melody, lovely ballad, uh, and it b breaks into a swing really really nicely too. Um, so it's called "Here's That Rainy Day." by uh, Jimmy Van Heusen and Johnny Burke. Uh, many, many players, great jazz players, including the great Wes Montgomery, have uh, you know, had this as a, a part of their uh, repertoire. Um, you, you'll probably notice that this tune uh, is written in a couple of different ways in the real book, but I'm using the one that's in, uh, in G major. Okay, in different versions of the of the real book. Okay, so this is this charts out of the real book. Uh, we're we're in G uh, G major. I think probably what we want to do is just take a look at some big chords to begin with, and just work work our way through the uh, the harmony of the tune. Right. So if if you're playing if you're playing rhythm, it says G major seven here. I won't get fancy. So G major is is obviously our, our one chord because we're in the key of G one sharp, right? And then we go to this flat three seven uh, uh, chord, which which is sort of suspect immediately. Like, what, where did that come from? Well, it's it's the five chord of the of the key of E flat. So uh, so we'll call you know we'll call this the one in G major. We'll call this the five in E flat, and then the uh, the one in E flat major, and then the four in E flat major, and then uh, the two in G, and then the five in G, and back to G, and then we have a two five. Of C, uh, C minor in this case, but that C minor, I, I think it's called interpolation. That the C minor is it, we're, we're really it's really the two chord in the key of B flat, and then F seven, the five chord in the, uh, to the key of B flat, four chord again. In the key of B flat, two, five, one in G again. We return to G, then two five in the key of G, back to the top. C major this time, clever, and C major to the uh, relative minor, and then to the D7 secondary dominant, and then uh, the, uh, I think we'll call this the, uh, the three in the key of G. We're sort of, you know, gently flipping back to the, uh, to the key of G. Let's just call this the three in the key of G. B minor, E minor, the six in the key of G, secondary dominant, which, you know, sort of wants to go somewhere else, but it, 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 it ends up being the two. It goes to the two chord, to the five, to the one where we started. Okay, the 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 melody. I'm going to integrate the melody into the chords, and you'll the melody will become clear to you. Okay, uh, so let's start with the melody at the top. Here's our D. We have to read it an octave higher. Um, I'll I'll use um, G major seven, and then B 
B-flat. And then the steel B-flat with a D on top. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to play every single note, a chord with a note, a melody note with a chord underneath it, but you know. flat major 7 with a D on top and then A flat so I'll play that again and then A minor with the D on top Here's a root down here if you want it. D minor. And now, when when you get to a point where you've got you've got a, a, a measure at measure seven, there. Let me get, just get the pointer. Measure seven here. You've got this G major seven, and uh, and then and then they, this little turnaround leading to a to a C minor in this case, uh, and uh, but there's nothing going on with the melody, right? The melody is static at this point, uh, and so and so there there are th th these are these are invitations for you to uh, to put in whatever fills that you know you might you might want to put in uh, because because the melody has been stated you've done your job right um. okay so you get the idea uh, so let's take that from the beginning um, I'm just using a, a major six this time why not with the E flat on top and then an F7 and then uh, G right. a little chromatic line So now we're in the second ending, and we're going to jump up, uh, up, of, up the fretboard to get an octave higher. So the, even though the melody note is the same up there, right? So I have C major seven, and then and then it flips to an A minor seven with the same melody note. You'll you'll want to make that change. It's a pretty change, but you just have to make sure that you. Uh, um, I, I'm just uh, you know, make that just make the change smoothly, and then here, and then A minor down here, D thirteen, and then B minor seven, and E minor. Uh, sorry. Um, So that B minor, and then to the E minor, 
So that E minor, that's it. I just use an abbreviation here. It is like an E minor nine. And then back to that A, A, uh, A minor. And then uh, with the A on top. And then 13. And then G. Okay, I, I think that was uh, I think that was fairly fairly clear. I, I hope so. Um, let, let me just let me just take it uh, take it one time from the top. So we have uh, and then the turn around. You can you can put in the fill there. Take it up an octave. Just a, a, a many, many different things that you can do there. Uh, in in terms of you know, as I said before, uh, the melody is already finished, uh, and and you're if, especially if you're if you're doing a, a final cadence, right? You're you're finishing it off. You can you can go you can bounce into another key. You can f do fills all over the place. You know whatever whatever you want to do at that point, right? Um, it it also uh, it, it's important to uh, to think of whether you are uh, you know playing with other people or whether you're going to just play this as a solo. If you're playing this as a solo, you can play much more rubato, right? Rubato meaning without uh, without tempo. Uh, so I hope the the melody uh, became a little clear to you there, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and I hope the, the, you can get these chords underneath your fingers. Uh, they're they're pretty straightforward. Remember that when you start a, uh, a chord melody, start by a analyzing what you're doing. You know, you you could even you know work your way through like this just in a in a rhythm style, right? And just make sure that you know uh, you know how the chords are, are functioning because that's going to be a really important aspect when you move forward to uh, to more of a, uh, a solo single note line solo thing. Um, okay, good. I think I think I'll leave it there. I could I could go on forever. Lovely tune. Uh, I, I hope you want you'll want to uh, incorporate it into your repertoire. Um, if this is a help to you, like, subscribe, uh, comments are really important to us. And um, and I hope that when you come and visit me here, you, you come and visit me with, you, with the guitar in your lap and ready to go and tuned up. Okay, um, see you real soon and uh, best of the holidays to you all. Okay, bye.